Hey guys, today I'm going to be doing my April wrap up. Um, it's quite pitiful, I'm not going to lie. I read one book and a half. Actually two books. Well, okay, I read one book, one play and a half a book. So, not great. So the first book I read is the last book I needed to read for university, which is three Icelandic outlaw sagas, which are the saga of Gisli, the saga of Greta, and the saga of Horde. So that kind of concludes my Norse journey. Um, I have really, really enjoyed this module, actually. Um, I've just finished my essay on honour, family commitment and loyalty, and all that kind of stuff to do with Icelandic society, and... Icelandic independence and transitions from pagan to Christianity and all that kind of ugh. yeah I really really enjoyed this actually I'm gonna take a break from Norse Lit um, I'm not gonna lie but I'm definitely gonna return to it because I have enjoyed them I do want to kind of extend my reading of it so yeah I then read Peter and Alice by John Logan which I recently hauled I don't know if the hauls up before this video or after so you'll see this at some point ah my bookmark fell out of it. <laughs> this is a play and I would have so loved to have seen this being performed because it sounds so beautiful. It's about Alice Liddell and she meets Peter Llewellyn Davis at a Lewis Carroll exhibition in 1932 and they both have something in common in that they were young children when these books were written about them and they also had quite disturbing relationships with the authors Lewis Carroll and J.M. Barry. Also in this are the actual characters of Alice and Peter, all kind of a discussion between how the books affected them, how it influenced them and really when they were children they didn't really realise what was going on but as adults they can recognise how maybe it wasn't as positive as they really thought and it was so wonderful. I could really hear Judy Dench and Ben Whishaw's voices coming out of those characters. It's just a really really great play. I'm really enjoying reading plays at the moment. They're so short and easy to read. So yeah, if you get the chance, definitely check this out. It's been doing the rounds recently and for good reason as well because it's very good. It's made me want to reread Peter Pan now as well. I've never been a fan of Alice. I think she's a bit naff but Peter Pan will definitely be on my to read list this summer again. And that's all the books I read. How depressing was that? I did say in my a no March wrap up that I wanted to read The Last Runaway by Tracy Chevalier and I did get a good chunk of the way through it. I got halfway through and it's incredibly good. I'm really really enjoying it, but I can't concentrate anymore. I am going to put this off. I'm putting it down for now because I, there's no point in finishing the book just to say I've I've finished it um, if you're not going to enjoy it. Maybe until the end of May, that last week in May, I've got everything out of the way and I'm just going to chill and I'll probably read the last half then because I'm loving it and as it is, it's just bad timing. I don't want to read it when I'm not fully immersed. And rather randomly, I've also been reading Rome. The guide pack to Rome. This is what it's had to come to. My wrap up is that poor. I've read two books. I've had to resort to reading the DAA city guide pack. I'm going to Rome the 1st of June so I thought I'll read a bit about it. Where can we go? And it's actually got this really cute little map at the back. It's very good. I mean if you go into Rome, AA guide to Rome. It's very <laughs> it's useful. Um, but that's all I really can say about it. I mean, what do you say? It's a guide of Rome, guys. Side note though, if anybody's been to Rome and they have any good restaurant recommendations or things to do in Rome recommendations, then that would be good because I'm going there in a couple of weeks and I have no idea what we're gonna do there. So yeah, please leave your suggestions below. I thought I would also make this a bit of a favorites video because otherwise this video is just gonna be nothing, is it? The first being Garnier Ultimate Blends One Minute Treatment. Um, oh, this is still, this is still wet. As you can probably see, my hair is quite long. It's kind of getting waist length now, um, which it was never really intentional, but I'm, I'm sticking with it because I like having long hair. This is so good for long hair because I've always been quite lucky in that I don't have like dry split ends or anything like that, but it, it does get knotty really easily. And this, you just like, what what's that sensation called like i don't know put on like spread on future beauty guru right here yeah you just spread it on anyway and you leave it for a minute and it's supposed to make it tangle free and lovely and it really does it smells really good um oh oh my god i've just got some on my nose how attractive oh what what a bad idea this was 
whose idea was this? Seriously, what what a idiot I am. Either way, you rub it on your hair, it makes it smell amazing, like the kind of smell you get when you walk out of a salon after having your hair done, and it makes it so smooth and silky and shiny and lovely. Moving on because it's absolutely just, it's ugh, it's exploded everywhere. <laughs> the next thing I'm going to recommend is this Maybelline Lash Sensational Mascara. It's actually my mum's but I want, I used it so much she was just like, you know what, have it. Really really good, it makes your lashes look really really long. Um, I would say don't use this like too much. I use I usually put only one or two layers on, otherwise it makes it look a bit clumpy, but it's really, really good. A couple of other favourites I have are a couple of YouTubers, number one being Wolf's Whistle, um, I'll link her down below, she has really, really great videos, I've been just binge watching her recently. She has such a diverse range of topics that she talks about, she reads YA and adult books. A recent video she did um, is one of my favourites of hers, which is, it was something to do with like reading, literature and travel, and how she associates books with certain places that she read them in, which is a really good video. She also talks about LGBTQ tea or whatever the order is of it and that kind of representation in books which is very good so I'll link her below go and check her out. Another YouTuber I'm really really enjoying at the moment is Harriet Murray. I've been subscribed to her for years but she's recently moved to Taiwan for five months uh, with uni I think. Her vlogs are fantastic she's really really made me want to go to Taiwan now which is another place I've added to my bucket list and she is so bubbly and just friendly and smiley and lovely that it just it makes you want to watch on and her videos are so good it's so lovely seeing the culture and the landscapes of Taiwan and Taipei and she's just brilliant go and watch her I also want to recommend Bronwen from just a little bit of twaddle because her videos are fantastic I really really love her she's got such a soothing voice you could read audiobooks she really could um, I really really love her videos she does a really nice kind of range of videos she reads a lot of different kind of stuff so as ever I will leave channel links in the description please go and check out all these three youtubers because they're all my kind of current obsession and I love them all. The other two things are songs. The first song is Lost Stars by the guy from Maroon 5. I can't remember his name. Adam something I think. I really really love this song and I cannot stop listening to it. I also also really really love a cover of Robin's Dancing on My Own that somebody did. I can't remember the names, I'm so bad with names. I really really love his cover. I first heard it on Britain's Got Talent actually, which sounds really cheesy but whatever, and he's put up like a proper professional video of him doing the cover and I've just downloaded it to my phone and my iPod and I've just been listening to it constantly. It's, his voice is so beautiful. I really really hope he goes far because I really want him to do an album so I can just listen to his voice because it's so beautiful and he's from my hometown so that's lovely. So that was my kind of failed April wrap up slash favourite. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching. Please let me know in the comments your favourites this month and what you've been reading, what you plan to read in May and I will see you in my next video. Bye!